Hi, my name is Mark, and if you've been subscribed to my channel for a while, you're probably waiting for the lesson videos, and it's not really like I'm stopping the lesson videos or anything. I've mentioned this in the previous videos I made, if you haven't watched those videos, I'll explain it again. I'll still do those lesson videos, but overall I want to experiment with some other styles of content that I definitely want to make, because sometimes I felt like those lesson videos weren't really videos that I really wanted to make, were just videos that I made for the sake of it, so I decided to slow it down a little bit, just do one video a week and try to explore some other stuff, and again bring you content that maybe is a little bit different, but I definitely want to make and I think you guys will enjoy. And it's the same thing with this video. I've talked about this before, but for those of you who don't know, when it comes to guitar picks, I'm pretty picky. In this case, pun non intended, but I will take it. Even though if I have to pick with a random pick, I'll probably do it, even though depending on the pick it might feel awkward and whatever. But if I have to choose just one pick, it's probably the ones I've been using for years, which are these Dragonheart guitar picks ones. In fact, this is their hardened model, which is, as the name implies, a little bit harder than the other models, and it's supposed to last longer than the other ones. And even though you have some YouTubers like I think Rob Scallon, and at the time Robert Baker, I don't really think he's playing with these anymore, and I think Colin Scott from CS Guitars has also made a video about this. I've been using these picks for like, I don't know, uh probably like four years maybe, maybe more. And at the time I was using the Dunlop Altex Jazz 3s and even though they felt all right, I had some problems with them. One of them is because I play a lot and I pick a lot and I pick really hard, I would worn down those Altex Jazz 3s significantly over the span of like a week if I had to play a lot. So I decided to look for some picks that lasted longer. And these were some of the ones that showed up, again, especially because some of the YouTubers back then were using them. And initially I was like, okay, because they have this weird shape, which is supposed for you to have like this pointy part up here that you can play with that pointy part, you can play with the rounder part if you wanna play like chords and stuff, and you have the regular part of it, you have a bunch of possibilities, and they're made of like this fancy material that I think it's used on like spaceships or something, that's supposed to last for a really long time, so I decided, okay, let's try these out. And something really weird happened, which was at the time I was using those Jazz 3 Altex picks from Dunlop, I had already tried a bunch of other models, and every time I chose a new model of pick to use, I definitely struggled with it a little bit, I would have to get used to it first, and then learn how to play with it, but when I got these on the mail, I looked up how Rob Scallon hold them, and if I'm not sure, he holds them like this, using the pointier part, I think. And I was like, okay, it's a little bit weird to hold a pick like this, but let's just try it. And I instantly connected with it. I didn't really need to have a time to get used to it, nor did I struggle to play with it or whatever. It, I just instantly connected with it. And that's something that really doesn't happen as often as you think. So I was like, okay, Maybe that's something that we can try. And I was like, okay, that's cool and unusual, but let's check what at the time was the most important part for me, which was how long they lasted. And let me tell you that they definitely last forever. I mean, yeah, maybe forever is a little bit of an exaggeration, but unlike those Jazz 3 old text ones, which I could wear down significantly in like a span of a week or two, I can play with these for two and three months and they don't really wear down as much as you think. And even after like three or four months of playing, even though they have been worn and they're not as pointy as maybe the brand new ones, they definitely feel very playable. I'm not really getting paid to say this and I don't really think they would pay me for saying this in a video where I'm going to shoot out against this one and maybe perhaps find a pick that I like more than this one. And like I just mentioned now, and you were probably able to check on the title, I'm actually shooting out this one against a couple of other picks that I've been either suggested to try out, or I've seen some other YouTubers and players using them. Not because I'm not in love with these anymore, I definitely am, but because these are made in the USA, and they don't really have any distributors in Europe because they're a smaller brand, even though these last a long time, and I don't really need to buy them constantly, because picks are a small thing that you can lose if every time you drop them and don't really check where you drop them. And when you play gigs, it's definitely worth it to have a bunch of picks laying around. Sometimes you need to order a bunch of picks, and I can't really order a bunch of them, and because they're made in the USA and I'm in Europe, every time I want to buy some, because these are boutique picks and are more expensive than your regular run-of-the-mill picks, I can't really order too much without the price ramping up. And because they're made in the USA and I live in Europe, if I buy more than, I think it's like $25 or 22 euros worth of material, I have to pay import taxes, and that makes it that, for me, buying these sorts of picks can sometimes be a little bit of a hassle. So again, it's not really like I'm trying to get rid of this, but because we're guitar players and we like to try out new gear and try out new stuff, I thought, okay, let's get a bunch of picks and shoot them out against the Dragonheart ones, see how they compare and see if they can dethrone them. And again, it's, this is sort of like a pick journey for me, it's not really like you'll learn anything, at, or I mean, maybe you get my opinion on some of these picks, but it's not really like it's going to 
possibly change your mind completely, you'll still need to try them on your own because like I mentioned before, even though when I tried these, I was completely sold on them. Most of my friends that tried these ones are like, uh, they're super weird, I don't like them. But for me, they work better than any other pick. So I decided to bring you guys along in this pick journey of mine and see where we end up with. I had to order strings and some other things from Toman, so I decided to buy some picks that they had in stock and try them out. So we're going to do a little unboxing right now, and after it we'll do maybe like a first impressions part of the video, where I just try some of those picks for the first time. Then we'll leave like maybe, I don't know, maybe a week or two to get used to these picks, and then I'll film that part, but yeah. This is pretty much the video. Like I mentioned before, we're going to the unboxing part, but before we do, I just want to say, please subscribe to my channel. As you're probably aware, YouTube acts a little bit weird. Even if you subscribe to the channel, those channel's videos may really not show up in your subscription box. And even if you ring the little notification bell thingy below, you still really will not be notified of the channel's content. So if you want to stay tuned to my videos, not only do I suggest subscribing and turning on all the notifications, but also follow me on social media. Not only do I post some exclusive stuff there, I can provide solos and generally for backing tracks. And generally, wherever I am up to at the moment, but I always post it about my videos. Links for digital suspects will be below, but in general, at Mario Clear's Guitar. And since you're down there, please consider leaving a like and share this video on social media. I'd highly appreciate it. But yeah, I guess now we can get back to the video itself. Let's go to the unboxing part of the video. And yes, I promised in my last two videos that this channel would not just become an unboxing channel. And these last videos definitely contained unboxings. But let me assure you, that's not what just this channel is going to become about. So like probably many of you know, I don't really have like a proper unboxing setup. So I just needed to hack something around. Besides, like, the point of the video isn't really for it to be like an unboxing video. It's more like that demo sort of a thing. So, hey, who cares really? Let's just open it up and see what's inside. I was running low on a couple of strings and I actually needed to get a couple of cables and stuff like that. But because I'm an idiot, I didn't really do a list of what things I needed. When I placed my order, I ended up forgetting about some things that I actually needed, like cables. <laughs> I've seen worse jobs. Okay, so this isn't exactly for me, really. I was browsing through the Toman website. I was like, okay, I need to order some things. And my dad looked at the screen and was like, oh, what's that? And he looked at this headphone stand, so he was like, oh, I better get myself one of those. So, yeah, this isn't exactly for me, but yeah. Gravity stands, HP HTT01B headphone table stand. Go look it up if you're into that sort of a thing. And like I mentioned to you before, I actually needed some strings. The Dario NYXLs, these are the ones I prefer. I haven't really tried the XT ones, in fact I actually got some of the acoustic ones to put on my new tailor, but I haven't really gotten the time to do it yet. But yeah, I've got a 3 pack of 10 to 46. I usually do 10 to 46 for the Fender scale length guitars that are tuned a half step down. And sometimes for my Gibson guitars, I have it for standard tuning, but I don't know, I'm feeling that tends a little bit stiff for the Gibson style of tuning. Maybe I should try 9.5s for the standard tuning and the Gibson ones. Because, well, that's pretty much what all of these ones are. These are 9.5s. These are the ones I use for my standard tuning in the Fender scale length guitars. And to be honest, it's not really like I'm a wuss or I'm against heavy strings. It's just that over the years, I've been sort of feeling like lighter strings have a better tone. And yes, I know Steve Ray Vaughn 13s and whatever, but that's not the point. And of course, the big boys, I actually needed to get some bass strings. Because for those who don't know, I'm actually a bass player as well. And even though I use the Dario NYXLs for my guitars, I have been using Ernie Balls for my bass strings, well, since the beginning of my bass playing journey, really. And it just feels really great, and I never really got around to trying some of the Dario NYXL strings for bass. Maybe I should, but I haven't really gotten the time to yet. I'm always like, eh, I'll do it next time, just to get the strings I already know about and whatever. Okay, so what picks did I actually get? I got a couple of boutique-ish picks. I wouldn't really say they're completely boutique, but... Yeah, they're sort of boutique, I guess. So, I kept hearing about chicken picks, not only from Glenn Fricker, but also from Henning Polly. So, I was just like, okay, maybe I should try some. So, I decided to get these two, the light and regular ones. I also looked at other boutique brands, like these V picks. I heard them from Levi Clay, he uses them a lot, I think he's sponsored by them or whatever. I got the stiletto one, which this one is pretty much more like a jazz three shape. These are what they call the stiletto, I think. They also got this bad boy, which is what I think they call their diamond shape or diamond pointed one. It's a little bit thicker. It's sort of like that chubby one that Dunlop makes. But I was like, okay, let me try that one. They looked cool. And by the videos I saw, I thought they might be similar to my regular Dragonheart Pix ones. And of course, I had to get the, the grandfather of Pix, Dunlop. 
I decided to get some of these prime tone ones. Like I mentioned before, some of those Tortex ones and stuff like that, they were never really my thing. I mean, for bass I don't I don't mind them, but for guitar they were never really my thing. And I heard a couple of good things about the prime tone ones. I think this is a material that's supposed to be more like the material they used like old school, like Turtle Shell or something like it. So I'm going to retry some of these. And you definitely see a lot of artists getting like signature prime tone and flow ones. And yeah, by saying flow, those are the other ones I got. I got some of these Dunlop flow ones. And yeah, all of them feel pretty decent, I guess. None of them feel like really cheap. I mean, none of them were really cheap, to be honest. But yeah, let's go back to the video itself. So these are all the ones I've got. Again, the regular Dragon Hearts hardened one that I usually use. Then you have the Prime Tone by Dunlop, the Flow by Dunlop. Then you have the Diamond by Vpix, the Stiletto by Vpix. And then by Chicken Picks, we have the regular and the light ones. Again, there were a bunch of picks I could have gotten, but these are the ones I chose. Again, brands just based on recommendations and stuff that I saw online used by other guys that I respect the opinions of. And as by the models, like I mentioned before, since I had to order some strings from Toman, I was just like, okay, let's just get some picks and see what we're working with. And I'm not going to even plug in my guitar or anything, even though you can probably acoustically hear it. This is not really like a tonal thing, it's much more me giving you my first impressions of what I think about these picks. Like I mentioned before, I've been using these Dragonheart guitar ones like for ages now. But yeah, these ones... Let's go chicken picks, let's go for the light one. Not really sure how well it's focusing really, but here it is. This is what they consider the light with 2.2 millimeters. Uh, well, the first thing I noticed is that they don't really glide as well on the strings. It's not like they feel sticky or anything, but it definitely feels like the Dragon Hearts guitar ones that I just used and that I'm used to using. It feels like, I don't know how to explain it, maybe it feels like they're almost lubed. Yeah, it's weird. Again, first impressions wise, it's not really like I'm super surprised or overwhelmed, but I'm not underwhelmed either, it's just like, okay, it's a good pick. Oh, and by the way, these are supposed to, and I'm just reading the package here, these are supposed to last longer, increase your speed and reduce fatigue, and then have a brighter tone with more bottom end. Well, I'm not so sure about that, I need to try them more. Uh, okay, so this is the heavier one, the regular with 2.6 millimeters. This one definitely feels heavier. Not saying that's a bad thing, but it definitely feels heavier. I gotta say, I prefer this to the regular one, at least I think. But I'm not sure I prefer it to the regular Dragon Hearts one, at least, ju at least just yet. But hey, these are just first impressions. Okay, so let's go for the... V-Pix Stiletto is the tiny acrylic jazz thing, dra jazz sort of a thing. Okay, this one feels very smooth. Okay, I'm not sure if it's because it's a tinier pick, or it's because of the acrylicness of it, but it definitely feels a whole lot faster again, like it's like it's lube or something. Um, it's the acrylic part of it, of course, but then it definitely feels like it has more high end. It definitely feels very fast. Like I mentioned before, it's pretty much a Jazz 3, which is slightly smaller than I would appreciate. But I definitely feel not only impressed, but I actually think that 
these ones are a hell lot louder than the other ones. Maybe it's just me or maybe it's just psychosomatic. If I had for some reason to give them like, I don't know, a score, I would give the Dragon Hearts guitar bass just so that you have like a reference point. I'd give it like an eight and a half maybe. And then for the chicken pegs, the first one for now, at least for me, it's like, I don't know, maybe a 6.7, 6.8. Then the heavier one, it's like a 7.2, and then the stiletto one is like, I don't know, a 7.8, 7.9. Let's go for the Vipex diamond one, the thick chubby one. Okay, that feels weird. It kind of feels weird just to hold it, I'm not really sure how I'm supposed to hold it, really. <laughs> I mean, it's alright, it definitely glides a lot, it's probably because it's so rounded and thick that it sort of glides along the strings. Even though that's cool, I wonder for the next time that I'm going to try it, because it's so rounded off and so thick, if for it gliding all the time, if it does a lot of scratching noise when it's plugged in. Not scratching, that squeaky noise when, it plugs, when it's plugged in. But hey, for now, I didn't really dislike it. Um, it's probably like, I don't know, a 7 maybe? So let's get to the Dunlop Flow ones. Okay, so these are immediately not as loud. Well, I mean, they're alright for soloing, and they have this little, like, indentation thing on the middle, which is good for holding it better, and it has little grooves. And it definitely feels great, um, but it, I don't know, for some, for some reason it feels a little bit weird to do rhythm, especially that funkier style. I don't know, it feels alright, I mean, it feels like a good material and I like the texture a lot, which is an important part, I guess. I don't know, score-wise, I think I'd give it probably like 7.7 .7 maybe. And lastly but not least, let's go for the Dunlop Prime Tone one, I think this is the more traditional one. And this is, coincidentally, I think the thinnest of them all, but even for thin, it's a 1.5 pig, so I think it's kind of heavy. Okay, so again, it's alright, um, I definitely like the feel of it, um, is it better than my Dragon Hearts one? No. Um, is it the better of all the other ones? I'm not really sure, but let's just, for the sake of it, try the Dragon Hearts one again. I mean, now after trying all of the standard uh, shape ones, this one definitely took a little bit to get back to used to. But, I don't know, for a first impression stake, neither of them took the harder test, which is to be like, whoa, it just blows me up my mind, fuck these Dragon Heart picks. Well, no, the, none of that did that. They all felt alright in their own ways. I mean, I'm just going to play the same lick with all the picks and give you my final thoughts. So let's do Dragon Heart pick one, just a standard lick. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure if it's because I'm too used to the Dragon Hearts pick one, but for now, I mean, overall, they pretty much did alright. I mean, the ones I didn't really like the most were the Chicken Picks one. I mean, no offense, they're great picks. They feel great, they're just not my sort of thing, I guess. Even if the shape isn't maybe as pointy as the other ones, 
I mean, the material itself, it feels a little bit weird, at least to me. Um, the VPEX definitely felt alright. I specifically like the stiletto one. Yeah, the chubster one, the diamond-sided one, like, or whatever they call it. Um, it's pretty good, but overall, it's not like I don't didn't enjoy it, but I think... And again, I need to... Again, I'll experiment with it more for the next week or something. But it definitely feels a little bit weird. I mean, maybe it's because it's so rounded, but we'll see. And when it comes to the flow, I mean, the flow is pretty cool. I mean, I definitely like the feel of the material. I like how it's sort of sticky to the fingers, but not to the string. But for some reason, it feels weird to do rhythm with it. I'm not sure if that's a good point to it or not. And then for the prime tone ones, again, these are the more traditional ones. They're the ones who are the thinnest. And they are the biggest ones with a more traditional shape. And even though the feel is great, and I think the tone is cool, yeah, for now, none of them really surpassed the Dragonheart's Guitar Picks one. Let's end this segment right here, and we'll check it out later after a couple of weeks to see what I still think about them. Two weeks later. Okay, so a little bit over, like, I don't know, two weeks maybe, I did that little unboxing slash first impressions part of the video, and I've been trying to get used to those picks and see how they fare against the Dragonheart's one. And to be completely honest, 